No, 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 he's gonna get me. No, he's let gonna him, get me with the other one. Don't let him go. Don't let him let go. Him go, Alex. Don't let him. Oh, he's fuck. Look, it might be a small animal, but in that environment, if it cuts the guy and the Vibrio bacteria gets into his system, he's losing a limb, maybe even his life. And then you've got a serious problem. Hello, my name is George Chapman. I'm a wildlife biologist from an anti-poaching organization out in Africa. And today I'm gonna to be breaking down some of the most iconic videos from I to the Thing, an Australian YouTuber who does all sorts of shenanigans by the looks of it, commonly involving Australian wildlife. So let's get into it. The first video of the day is frogs keep drowning themselves in my pool. Let's go. How you going? This is my pool. And this is a frog. It's not meant to look like this. It's dead. And this is an eastern water skink known for their love of water. Also dead. First I need to figure out why they keep drowning. And I think it's because the pool has these slippery tiles on the side. So when the striped marsh frogs and water skinks jump in and then try to get out, they can't grip their slippery fingers on the edge so they get tired and drown. Unlike this guy, the Perrin's tree frog, that I'll often see doing leisure laps in my pool, and they never seem to get stuck as they have these suction cups on their soggy feet. But I okay, pause here. Good so they don't actually have suction cups on their feet. It's actually a really common myth. I mean, they're called tree frogs, right? And if you ever put a suction cup on a tree, it doesn't really stick. It's because they're using an intermolecular force called van der Waals forces. And if you remember doing atoms from school, you have the nucleus and the electrons that go around it. And the electrons are negatively charged. So if there's more electrons on one side than the other side, that side becomes negatively charged, right? Because it has negatively charged electrons, which means that this side is negative and this side is positive. And just like magnets, positives and negatives attract. So if you have positively charged against a negatively charged, they're gonna start attracting. And that's exactly what the frogs here are doing, along with geckos and other lizards that have evolved to be above ground. So the frog's feet isn't actually like suction cups, but it's instead like a built-in magnet, simply put, which is absolutely insane. But let's rewind a bit, because we can see that a different frog species and a different lizard weren't able to survive. But why is that? So since water skinks are terrestrial and haven't evolved to have the van der Waals forces, they're not able to climb and they die. And the other frog is the striped marsh frog. Now, if you picture a marsh, it's quite flat, which means that the striped marsh frog isn't an arboreal species. An arboreal species is like a species that has evolved to live above ground, like in trees and stuff, like the tree frog. So it wouldn't have adapted and evolved to use the van der Waals forces to stick onto surfaces, which is completely fine in the marsh environment. But when you go into someone's pool and you can't use van der Waals forces to get out of it, sadly, you're gonna die. But let's fast forward to see how we actually solve this problem. Yeah, a simple platform with a good grippy surface is probably the best thing to get them out. So that's good, but let's read the comments and see what they have to say. I love how getting a pool cover was never an option. Yeah, prevent the problem before you solve the problem. Easy said, really. But I've known people that have literally had deer die in their pool slash pond thing. So not really sure if you can get a cover for that, but for lizards and frogs and stuff, go for it. Sorry to interrupt with this quick message, but I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't important, so please watch to the end, it won't take a minute. This video is actually a fundraiser, because recently I've been hired by the anti-poaching organisation Vetpaw to monitor the increasing brown hyena population, but for this I have to fundraise $19,000 to fundraise all the camera traps I'm going to use to monitor them. Hyenas aren't evil, and in fact they protect the ecosystems and the local communities around them, as they stop the spread of diseases by eating carcasses. This is why it's so important to protect this near threatened species. Now that's where you come in. If you subscribe right now I will donate 10 cents of my own money towards this fundraiser so please subscribe and share this to your friends so they can subscribe too so I can end up flat out broke all in the name for conservation. But if you want to make some bigger donations you can go to the first link in the description where you'll be taken to my GoFundMe page and there you can donate as much money as you want. If you donate five dollars or more I'll give you a shout out on my next video but if you donate twenty five dollars or more I'll read the attached message you can send on the GoFundMe fund me donation on my next video as long as it's no longer than 30 seconds long like don't drag it out and as long as it's not hateful or political 
You can use it to promote your YouTube channel, your business, your meme page, or just a message you want people to hear. Thank you for watching this part of the video. Now back to the main bit. Right, on to the next video. Can a mud crab cut off your finger? It is so f***ing deep. Yeah, is there such a thing as quick mud? Can you get, can you die in this? Which surprisingly only took a couple of minutes before Willem found our first one hiding in a hole under this pipe. I got sleep in here. <laughs> okay, let's pause here. So, not surprisingly, we can see the mud crab is wedged between the log and the mud. That's because they're nocturnal, so they're active during the night, like bats. So, during the day when they're sleeping, they like to burrow somewhere safe, and a great example of that would be the little crevice between the log and the mud. Let's continue. No wonder all there are all these crabs here. To get the mud crab, become the mud crab. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whoa. Oh, he's ready for you. He sees you. Right, so we've definitely found out. Oh, yeah, he is ready for them. Yeah, so that's classic fight or flight right there. I mean, huge geezers just woke me up. I want to fight you. That's just a classic example. He's trying to dig. Is he trying to dig? I think he's trying to get away, yeah. Okay, yeah, now he's barring. So he realized the fight option probably wasn't the best bet. So he's now going for the flight option. So huge geezers woke me up. I want to fight you. Turns out there's three of you and you're massive. Let's run away. Okay, so he's now giving the crab the little grip tester. How much do they get? I reckon if he's feeling really endangered, he's I reckon grabbing. he's gonna get 40 maximum. But that's oh, yeah, if he's actually like threatened oh, oh, oh. by it. 10 kilograms, 12. Whoa, 15. But I feel like crabs Okay, so 16 kg, that's fair enough, right? So both of these crabs are males by the looks of it, and you can tell by the V shape on the abdomen. You can pause it on a certain frame and you can see they're both males. So their pincers are gonna be stronger than females. However, this crab doesn't feel like his life's in danger, so he's not gonna be using his whole force. So 16 kg is fair enough. He's got it. Whoa! 30 k 30, 30 kilogram. Five. In like a second. Yeah, the, it, okay, let's pause it right here. So that one did 30 and a half kg. So it definitely felt at least somewhat threatened. But let's not forget, all of that force was pressured into one small area. So although 30 and a half kg doesn't really sound like a lot, I definitely wouldn't want that on my finger. And that would be very rough for the guy who does. Let's continue. Come on. Oh. Oh. So he's biting down? He's biting down. Going for it. Oh, okay, so it seems to be pincing down on a fake finger made out of like ballistic gel with a chicken bone in the middle. That'll happen. That'll happen. And the ballistic gel isn't holding up very well. And the crab managed to get through the flesh and down to the bone in a second. Then, just like a real finger, the flesh nicely degloved. Oh, oh my god. What did he well he's degloved. Okay, let's flesh. pause it here. So we saw the crab's force of his pincers was around 30 kilograms, but the force needed to snap a chicken bone is between 18 and 23 kilograms, according to Google. So that's gonna snap it very easily, but a human finger needs 100 to 150 kilograms. So it's not gonna snap a human bone by the sound of it, but we'll have to see. Let's continue. So I'll hold him. You come in there, stick and shake his hand. Straight there. I might hold this one so I can... Oh, you want just... to do this one? Yeah. I was going to hold this one. You're going to hold that one? Yeah, I'll hold this. Oh. I'm telling you now, the smaller ones hurt than the, more than the bigger. bigger. Yeah. He's quite hesitant to put his hand in. I mean, I'd be the exact same, right? Although a mud crab can't just cut your finger clean off, my concern would be the infection, especially with the Vibrio bacteria. There have been cases where people have newly done tattoos or even blisters or tiny little cuts they can get it infected and have their limbs amputated or if not treated they can die so yeah i'd hesitate as well to put my hand in there hi i'm alex hi i'm alex i can't do it oh you were so close you were there I saw they're leaving us here in the mangroves if you don't do it will you do it <sighs> okay he's getting his mate to do it all right Hi, Mr. Crab. I'm Alexa. It's nice to meet you. Absolute idiot. Oh. Yeah, it looks crab, painful. No, 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 he's gonna, get, no, he's gonna get me with the other one. Don't let him go, don't let him let go. Let the crab go, Alex! Don't let him. Oh, he's f***! Ah, okay, you gotta tell us. Can someone get it off? Hang on, hang on, you gotta No, no! You gotta tell us how much pain do you put out of 10? What it's is it? It's the worst handshake I've ever had. <laughs> it's the 
in, ah, 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 he, he gets angry. Don't, don't move, don't move the other hand, because the more you move that one, the more this one right, But if right, I let go of this hand. Okay. All right, so basically. No, don't, 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 don't give me another. Ah, 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 okay, now that's bad. He's pitching real hard I'm now. I'm not going to give you this one. Let no, go. No, no, you are. I promise just take you. it off. Just take I promise you. I'm holding him. I'm holding him. It's fine. Okay, so what we want to do is. Look, ah, it might be a small ah, animal, but in that no, environment, actually, if it cuts the guy and the video bacteria gets into his system, he's losing a limb, maybe even his life, and then you've got a serious problem. Okay, I've done it. I've done it. You have the pliers. Okay, let's get the pliers. Oh, come on, get him up. Oh, 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 B. Dude. Dude. <laughs> Dude, it didn't even break the skin. That's so good. Oh, okay. So, so it didn't break the skin. That's my main worry. So you're good. So he's going to get some bruising, but he'll survive. Not to say there can't be serious injuries, and Willem waited until after Alexa put the crab on his hand to tell me this, but it turns out some people that have been bit by mud crabs have lost limbs. And not from the force of the claws, but from infection. And I don't know why we didn't think of this, as obviously if you dig something out of this disgusting primordial soup and then let it stab through your skin, you're going to get all sorts of crazy bacteria into your body, like Vibrio vulnificus, which has caused many amputations and even killed people. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So, summary of the whole video, mud crabs cannot cut off your finger, but like anything and everything in the world, be careful because sometimes the most dangerous things are the ones you can't see. So, the next video we're going to watch is called Getting Stray Cats High So They Stop Eating My Pets. Let's get into it. I managed to find a friend that was happy to let me drug their cat for YouTube views and to see what catnip does. Thanks, Maddie. Alright, let's pause here. So, for some reason, cats are just notorious for altering their state of consciousness through mind-altering drugs. Like, even big cats like jaguars in South America will take the Yagi vine, which is used to make ayahuasca, which is a very potent psychedelic. But you'll have tribes in these places, like the Runapuna tribe, which translates to were-jaguar, like werewolves, but for jaguars. And the shamans will literally spiritually connect with the jaguars through these mind-altering drugs. So, summary of the story, cats are absolute drug heads. Let's continue. So let's see if the cats in my yard have a similar reaction. So I just set up a little bowl in their walking path and left it overnight. And first to come was this little chubby funster who doesn't seem to care and passes by twice more without having a word. Also, a lot and of the cats are actually ignoring him. So that's, that's quite surprising. Really I would have expected quite a few to be interested in my recreational use of catnip. So the cats in my yard have built up a tolerance and are used to much higher quality, stronger stuff, but it might also be because they can't properly smell it. So I built this cat tunnel, which will force whatever crawls through it to hopefully get real close to the catnip, getting a nice big whiff. And the first cat to come along is this. Ah, pause here. So you see the glow in the cat's eyes. Now you see this a lot in nocturnal animals in like night cam footage or any photo taken at night. And that's because it's the reflection of the back of their eye, a specific part called the tapetum lucidium. Now it's hard to pronounce, even harder to spell. And the whole function of it is for nocturnal animals to have any light that goes into it to be reflected out, which allows them to see in the dark a bit better. So animals like cats or nocturnal animals can see in the dark way better than we can. And the first cat to come along is this pure white girl who probably recognises the old catnip tunnel trap and refuses to enter. And the same with this scared old looking guy who just runs away. And then this patchy girl who almost gets the courage to come inside the wonderful catnip tunnel but then backs out. But then this big chubby fella comes along and judging by his size is not the best at self control and passes straight through the tunnel getting a good whiff of the catnip. And it must have taken a bit. For okay, the pause here. So as you might know, cats can be really skittish. So a tube like this might not be very encouraging, especially as they have really bad vision at short distances. In fact, cats can't really see anything within 30 centimeters of their face. So when things do get close to them, they tend to put their whiskers forward and use that as their primary way of detecting what's going on rather than their vision because it's just not reliable. So cats can't see things at a short distance and they're skittish. So a tunnel like this really isn't going to be appealing to them. So I'm surprised one of them went down it to be fair. So he's brave. Let's continue. And I kind of have no idea what I'm meant to do now. 
if you have any suggestions, I would love that. Like, how am I actually meant to stop these cats? Like, the Australian government has proposed a plan to drop millions of poisoned sausages into the bush to kill the cats. But cats aren't the only ones that enjoy a good sausage sizzle. And that might just result in the extinction of every man over 40. So unfortunately, he doesn't actually solve the issue, but he does ask for help at the end. So you can go online, you can find many methods on how to prevent cats from getting into your garden. Nothing as funny as getting them high, but in hindsight, giving them free drugs and later in the video, free food is only going to positively reinforce them coming back into your garden, whether they're there to kill your pets or not. I mean, if you're offering free drugs and free food to a group of individuals, like half my phone contacts would be interested in that deal. That's why group chats were invented. So I'm not surprised it didn't work, but worth the try. Now for the comment section. Exactly. I love how he's treating those cats to several gourmet meals and high quality drugs and expects them to want to leave his house. Yeah, that's facts. I mean, some buyers. It's really sad to know that people don't immediately see cats as an invasive species because they're cute and can be pets. Yeah, I mean, cats kill billions, if not tens of billions of birds and other animals every year. So it really is bad. And I know that a load of my birder friends actually hate cats because of the amount of birds they kill. But I know big birders and wildlife presenters like Chris Packham say that cats are really nice, they're beautiful animals. It's just the owners aren't controlling the cats and that's causing it to be such a bad problem. Which I can't disagree with, but that whole argument is a whole different box of frogs. Right, that's all the videos I'll be reacting to today. I hope you enjoyed. Again, if you want to support me and protect African wildlife, just subscribe down below. It's an automatic 10p donation. And if you want a shout out in the next video, go to the GoFundMe page in the first link in the description and donate there. Cheers.